My name is Mike Hunter, and uh, I'm one of the owners of Hunter Tool. Um, <clears throat> this morning we're going to talk about coring, and specifically we're going to talk about the one-way coring and the Core Pro cartridge. That's spelled K-O-R-P-R-O, -R -R Core Pro cartridge for the one-way coring. So people, customers, they've often asked about coring and why do you want a core? This is a nice walnut core, or a nice walnut bowl. It's probably about 20 inches in diameter. And, you know, we could certainly mount that on the lathe and uh, turn a nice big bowl. And to show you what you can wind up with is a nice big pile of chips. Or, you know, the other option is coming up with, a, you know, six nice bowls out of one block of wood. One of the first questions that customers ask is just what exactly is the Core Pro? <clears throat> the Core Pro is a cartridge that replaces the existing one way cutter. Uh, typical with Hunter Tool, you know, all of our cutters are carbides, so they uh, are not, you cannot sharpen them, you just, uh, it's a matter of turning the cutter so you bring up a new edge. So with the existing one way, it's available either in high-speed steel or in carbide, um, but you generally have to sharpen that, sharpen that after two or three cores. The goal of Hunter Tool is to develop a cartridge that will replace the existing one-way cutter and also increase your tool life. So we have the cartridge which holds a cutter and here's a, the cutter itself and the cutter is held on by the number one size screw. We do have customers, uh, some that uh, turn, uh, you know, some fairly exotic materials such as mesquite, pecan, and uh, vacuum formed pieces that have some of the plastic injected into the into the wood. Um, <clears throat> you know, they claim that they're getting 60 and 70 cores per edge. So. With the Core Pro, you've got two edges. There's edge number one and edge number two. When the cutter gets dull, you simply loosen the screw, bring, put in the new edge, and you're ready to go. So sharpening, uh, you know, there's no more sharpening. All you do is just rotate the cutter. Okay, so when you get the Core Pro, um, I'll just show you how to replace your existing cutter, which is right here, with the Core Pro. Um, so uh, the Core Pro comes with the cutter already attached, but uh, eventually you'll want to change the cutter and put a fresh cutter on there. So I'll just put the cutter on here right now, and then we'll put it on the uh, number three jaws, or number three set. So. Let's go ahead and put this on. So I'm just, I'm placing that in. See, we have kind of a diamond shape here, and it just slides right in. You get the screw in there, and we'll just wind it in. This is the same procedure if you were going to, um, turn the cutter around and get a fresh edge. You just open that up, turn it around, and then just screw it back in place. So this is the way your assembly comes. So let's go ahead and put this on the number three cutting arm here. So <clears throat> this is the old cutter and you can see the new cutter has the same setup in there so it matches perfectly. So we'll put that in place. Get that started.
And once you get this cartridge on there, it can go on there once and then you're just replacing the, the cutting edge. Okay, so there, you're ready to go. <clears throat> so today, I'll just give a little bit of background on the one-way uh, coring system. So uh, you get the base here. So the base, uh, you buy that for the size of your lathe. And these tubes, you can go from 16, 20, 24 inches. Um, so the base just has a little hole down that fits inside the, the bed of your lathe. So that holds it in place and this allows you to go forward and back for the size of core you're doing. And also you can go this way to see how deep your, your bow blank is, to see how deep you want your core to go. But um, the beauty of this is once you set it up for uh, say you had a large chunk of wood where you're going to be cutting with uh, number one knife, number two knife, and the number three knife. Uh, the best way I've found is to set it up for the number three, and then you can put the number, then the base is in place. You can put the number one in, take the core. The next radius is set up so that you've got plenty of room for the next one. So you go to the number two knife, and then eventually you go to the number three knife. So we're going to be um, uh, using two of the cutters today. I'm going to set up for the number one and the number two. So I have a, actually a little laser setup that's a homemade laser setup that one of the guys in our club made for me, Dan Ernst. And uh, so I set that on here. I put the laser on and the laser points down and shows me exactly where exactly where the cutter is going to end up. So in this case, I want to have probably a half an inch at the bottom. So I'm going to move the laser in and, and move this closer. And I think that's about right. So potentially I can lock that down, but I want to check it also out here. And on here, the, it's probably hard to see it on the camera, but on here that laser is pointing right there. So I know that's where my cutter is going to go in. So I can actually lock the base down now in this position. And I'll just check it one more time. Okay, that looks good. All right, that looks great. So once we position the base, um, our intention here is to do two cores. So we'll start out with the number one set of knives. And with this one-way system, um, you put it in here and you follow that around. And normally, if you were to just try to take a core with this only, once the knife gets really far into the core, there's a lot of torque and a lot of pressure down there. So the one-way system has the support arm or the support finger and the knife follows that around and supports the cutter when it's inside the core. So that's, mm -hmm. that's really the key to it. So it makes it a lot, a lot more, uh, a lot less drama with it, let's say. Um, so, we'll just go ahead and set this up and we'll do a core with the number one cutter. And as you can see here, I've already got the Hunter cartridge and cutter installed, so I'm ready to go there. Now initially, when you start your cut, this post is just a support. And as we get further and further into the wood, then we start using the support fingers. So we'll lock that up. I'll get my face shield and we'll be ready to go. 
Okay, so we're all set up. Let's go ahead and we'll take a smaller core and then we'll come back and take a little bit bigger core. So let's go ahead and get started. Right now for the smaller core I'm running about a little over 700 RPMs. So basically it's just steady pressure with the arm here and uh, we'll go in a little bit further and then we'll move the support arm in. <clears throat> you can see how quickly it cuts where these these uh, shavings just keep rolling out of there. Okay, so now I'm going to put the support fingers in there. So we loosen that up. And we move that into place. Now the key here is you want to push it in all the way so it's bottoming out where it was cutting before. And then just draw it back just a hair. So you got a little bit loose right there. We can tighten that up. So that's good. You always want to check to make sure there isn't any um, shavings or anything in there. But it seems to be running good right now. Now as I make the curve, I'm going to have to... You saw how quickly all those shavings were coming out. Uh, this thing really cuts. So um, I'm going to have to clear the shavings a little more often once I get inside. So here we go. I'm really going to sneak up on it when I go to where I was cutting before. Those shavings are coming out pretty quickly. Okay, already just that quickly I need to move the support arm again. So see how far that goes in? You can see how how good it is uh in the support of the arm there. Wait a minute. Okay, that looks good. Okay, we'll check it. Okay, that's running fine.
Okay, alrighty, I think we're getting pretty close to finishing this one off. Oh, it's still pretty tight. You can check this to see how close you are. Blow that. We're getting close. It won't take long now. I think we're there. Oh, not quite. A little bit more. Well, you can see I can wiggle this. So you just take it at 45 degrees and you just snap it right out. And there's your core. We got a nice core that way, so I'm just going to change these cutters out. This is the number one knife. I'm going to go to the number two. So here's my number two knife, and each, each knife set is a set because it comes with the support arm and the cutter. And this, uh, we have the CorePro cutter installed on this one, ready to go. So, we just drop this in. The only thing we need to do now, you can see this is without changing the base at all, I'm right there to cut my next core. I just have to move this out a little bit. Um, So that I can get the support, I want to get the support of this post here. So I'll just lock that in and we are ready to cut again. Okay. So let's go ahead. As you can see, this really throws out the chips. <laughs> In fact, there's ribbons of chips. <laughs> Okay, so already uh, we're going to have to move the support arm in. So I was blowing it off. I just clear the chips a little bit. So we just head that in. I can see we've got some chips in there. Okay, that looks like it's about right. So I just bottom that out into the kerf that we've already cut and then I just back it off slightly and you can tell you're in the middle because you got a little play right there. 
Okay, now I've, I can feel there's some chips in there. So what I do is I pack it in up on here and then I can take my arm, go in here and just sling some of them out. Okay, now we're free. So it's always good to pay attention to uh, clearing the chips. So we're ready to go again. Getting close. You can see all the chips coming out of there fast. Okay, that's pretty loose. I think that's just going to pop out of there. There it is. Okay, there's your next core. And you can see from this shot how the support arm helps to make the cut. Okay.